just a little bit. There, good. Good job. Give him a hand. Didn't he do a good job? <laughs> uh, about eight years ago, we started Independent Baptist Online College, and we have 2,300 students now, and we're offering a free course, a choice of three courses, personal soul winning, a 13-week college course on soul winning, creationism, a 13-week college course on Bible creationism, and then church ministries that I, that I teach. So uh, here's what we're going to do. I need somebody to help me do this. Can, can you? Good. Why don't you take this side, just hand everybody one. Okay. On this side over here and in the middle, whether they want it or not. Don't ask them if they want it. Just give it to them. And uh, then you can choose if you'll put, give a, you print your name and email. This is free, absolutely free. And if you don't know how to do the computer aspect of it, we got a gal that'll help you. Because I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to computers. But anyway, just if you'll print your name on the back and then tell me which course you want, one, two, or three, then I'll take that back to the people that can help you with it. And uh, if you'll do that, that would be a help. And so just drop it in the offering plate as it's passed a little bit later. And now if you'll take your Bibles this morning, this is Sunday school, so we're going to school, right? Two, two of us are going to school. <laughs> I want you to take your Bibles with me and turn to Psalm 116 and verse 15. Psalm 116 and verse 15. And uh, please uh, indulge me a little bit here. Uh, I, uh, my wife went to heaven on December the 29th at 6.30 in the afternoon. And I was, uh, I, I held her while she breathed her last breath. And uh, I miss her. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's just hard to imagine uh, uh, being without, you know, to lose a mom, a dad is bad. To lose a, uh, a child is, is worse. But my wife and I were married 58 years and uh, 52 of those in the ministry. So uh, she, uh, she put up with a lot. God bless her. She, she deserves um, the peace that she, uh, thank you, that she deserves it. Fifty surgeries, you can imagine, from 1980, and 90% of them are bone-related. So there's a, a pain that, if you know, I'm sure many of you do, but when it's a bone-related pain, it's, it's uh, probably the most difficult of all. And um, so, uh, just be patient with me as I go through that. Here, here's the Sunday school lesson. What is death? It would be good for us to find out what the Bible has to say, what death is. And maybe we can learn something here. Now, um, I had uh, Kathleen Davis. Brother Bell, do you remember Kathleen Davis? Kathleen Davis got saved at, uh, off a bus route, and she was in a wheelchair, and she, you, uh, you couldn't understand her half the time. And Kathleen got saved, and she died at a relatively young age in her 50s. We got ready for the funeral. The funeral director said to me, now, Pastor, I know this family. I've known them for, for years. When we have that funeral, uh, they're going to show off. And... Uh, and I, I didn't know what he was talking about. And I said, well, I don't understand. He said, well, just, I, just let me handle it. And so we had the funeral. And he told me, he said, now, you just stay behind the pulpit for just a little extra time. And so the family <clears throat> just fell out. I mean, I mean, just fell out. The, <laughs> the funeral director went around and made every one of them said, sit still. Made them sit down. Be quiet. And uh, after it was all over, here's what he said to me. He said, this is the difference between an unsaved family and a funeral and a saved family and a funeral. When you have no hope, uh, it's, 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 it's terrible. When you have no hope of stepping on streets of gold, living in a mansion, no death, no surgery, that's a that no hope, that's terrible. Now, we sorrow as others sorrow. No, we don't sorrow like others sorrow. So your sorrow is real, 
but it's not like others. People who, who don't know they're going to heaven when they die. It's a, it's a terrible, horrible thing uh, and to die without any hope. And then have a family member, uh, with, members with no hope. So this thing of death is real. It's appointed unto man once to die. Amen. After that, the judgment. Now please understand the decisions you make before you die determine what kind of judgment. If, you get, if you're not saved this morning, and by that, if you don't know for sure based on the Bible that you're going to heaven, you better figure it out. Come on. That's why the pastor's here. That's why the church is here. That's why the Sunday school lessons are here. And the teaching is here to make it clear to you. If I were, my wife were alive, if she were alive standing beside me with my four kids, my 10 grandchildren, my 14 great-grandchildren, and you looked at me and said, are you married? And I said, married, married. Am I married? Am I married? Am I married? My wife would take a skillet and bop me over the head. Come on. And she'd say, boy, you're married. Now, if you said to her, I don't believe you, what would she do? She would pull out something in writing called a marriage certificate. Everything you have in life that gives you security about what you do have is in writing. You have a driver's license. You have a birth certificate. You have a title to a car. You have a deed to the house. Everything you have, and if you have to go to court, you just lay it out, and that's, you're okay because it's in writing. All right, write this down. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13 says this, These things have I written. Now, he tells us clearly in the Bible that your confidence in going to heaven is based on what is written, that you may know that you have eternal life. Amen. So he writes it down. Well, what did he write down? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. Not maybe be saved, shall be saved. And it doesn't say for whosoever's baptized shall be saved. There'll be enough Baptists in hell to hold a Bible conference. You don't go to heaven because you're a Baptist or a Methodist or an Episcopalian or a Wiscopalian. Well, that was funny, wasn't it? Now, you go to heaven because of a promise from God to you. If you'll accept it, it's in writing. It's in writing, and if you'll accept what is in writing, then you can go to heaven. Now, take your Bibles and go to the Psalm 116 and verse 15. The Scripture says this, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. Amen. Now, you don't have, the Vatican doesn't have the right to declare you a saint. No man has a right to declare you to be a saint. You're a saint because you got born again. Amen. So you are a daughter of God. You are a son of God. And Jesus, we are heirs and joint heirs with him. So we're in the family. So I, uh, when, you, when you look at this, who's a saint? People that get saved. People that put their trust in what is written in the word of God. Not what your mama said. Not what your daddy said. Not, not what anybody said to you. That doesn't help you a lick. You can pray over a dead person all day long. They're still dead. Now, he said precious. So in the sight, now pre that word precious, think about this. You, you've seen the tornadoes come through and tear up houses and communities and so on. And you see, you see people walking through the destruction and picking up a picture and weeping. That picture doesn't amount to any value at all. But to them, it's precious. Your loved one that died, it may not have made the news. Nobody may have known it other than the family. But it's precious. It's like picking up something out of a destruction and look at it and say, this is precious to me. Uh, you are precious to him. God let his son, his only begotten son, die 
in your place, and God turned His back on His own Son. You're precious. Amen. If you're a child of God, a son or daughter of God, you're precious. Amen. Then He goes on to say, in the sight of the Lord. Well, when I look in the New Testament, I see where a sparrow falls. And guess what? God's right there. Amen. For a sparrow? Yes. Well, how much more, how much more important are you to God? You are, you are important to Him. You are precious to Him. Now, to the world, it may not mean anything. But to God, it means everything. Amen. So the very hairs on your head are numbered. Now, you bald people are giving God a break. It's not 3,594 hairs. It's hair one, hair two, hair... Th you got me? That's... You can't, you can't comprehend it. I can't comprehend it, but I know it's there. The Bible said so. So precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. So what is death? Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, please. Now, we're going to be looking at a lot of Scripture. And if I move too quickly, you're going to have to forgive me, and you're just going to have to jot the, the reference down, please. But we're going to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And verse 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 8. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 8, the Scripture says this, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Amen. So what is death? Death is absent, present. Absent, present. It's like leaving one room and going to the next room. You're no longer in the other room. You're in this room. And by the way, you're just as alive after death as you were before death, and even more so. Because you don't have all the body pain. You don't have the cancer. You don't have the, you won't need a doctor. You won't need a lawyer, and I don't know any lawyers that are going to heaven. Amen. We are confident that I say it willing rather to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. So according to the Bible, the verse that we read here, we are absent and present. Absent, present. Absent, present. Now, when you, when you take a good look at this, let's break it down a little bit. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4 with me, please. 2 Timothy chapter 4. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4, and let's go to verse, verse 6. Here's what Paul said. For I'm now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure, underline that word, departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Now, one of the descriptions of death is departure. He is speaking from the terms of being a soldier, because a, a, the word departure in Bible times was used for two things, a prisoner that was sent home and a soldier that was sent home. Paul was in the army of the Lord. My wife was in the army of the Lord, and she got her discharge on December the 29th at 6.30. Not a furlough, but sent home. You have loved ones, and maybe you, you're in the Army, Navy, Marines, and you served your time, you were sent home. Not a furlough, but sent home. My younger brother, Jerry, was in Vietnam, and he said it came to a point where they said, Jerry, we want you to go to Hawaii for an R&R, &R. and he said, well, like, still get out at the same time. They said, no. He said, I'll stay and fight. I don't want the R&R. &R. I will to get this over with. Now, I'm saying to you, you're in the Lord's army. Are you saved? Maybe I ought to ask you that. Are you saved? Okay, you're in the Lord's army. You're in the Lord's army. Now, your departure that Paul was speaking of is that of you served your time, now you're sent home. Where's home? Heaven. The second usage of the word departure in the Bible, in Bible times, has to do with being a prisoner. 20 years lock up, buddy, you're getting locked up for some crime you committed. Well, when the 20 years is up, you've served your debt to society, guess what? You're sent home. My wife was a prisoner to that body. 
She was a prisoner to the pain. She was a prisoner. We were in the hospital twice a month for the previous six months before she went to heaven. It was rough. It was hard. But guess what? She's in the Lord's army. Amen. And she was discharged and sent home. Are you saved? Amen. All right, you're in the Lord's army. If you're not, get in. Amen. Fight for the souls of men and women and boys. There is a hell. If there's no hell, I'm going home. I've spent holidays away from my family. I've spent, I've, I've spent more time in motel rooms than I have my own bed. And I'm not complaining. I'm in the Lord's army. It just so happened that was my calling for my life. I've written 36 books. I've got three more coming out this year. I've worked hard. And I'm telling you right now, it's important for you to understand, you're in the Lord's army. Are you saved? Amen. Well, you're in the Lord's army. But one day, guess what? God's going to send you home. Not a furlough, but home. You're a prisoner of that body of yours. And you know, the older we get, the more we discover body parts we didn't even know we had to hurt. Man, alive. I, it's just, I, I can't see you right now. My right eye is all fuzzy, and I can't, I can't, I can't. In fact, some of you look a lot better than you did last year. But, <laughs> but my eye is fuzzy over here. I got cataracts, and I, I can't tell. I, I, I have to be careful about steps. I can't, at night, when the lights, the headlights come, I can't tell how close they are. And, uh, and, and <laughs> you, you better thank God you don't live in my town. I, you'd be scared of me for sure. Now, hey, hey, you're in, are you saved? You're in the Lord's army. Now fight. Fight for right. But in this day and time, these crazy students paying a hundred thousand, these parents paying a hundred thousand dollars for their kid to go to a for education and then they tear the place up. What in the world? Bunch of brats. Amen. Man, we've we've lost it. No discipline anymore. Man, when I got in trouble at school, I ran as fast as I could to get home before that phone call came. And many a time, I scooted like that and went to the front door, and my mama was already on the phone. And I'd bust in the door, and she'd look at me and say, too late. Guess what? I got a swatting at school, and I got another one when I got home. My daddy taught me how to work. My mama taught me how to work and to not ruin the other man's property. My daddy, oh, he'd get on me. If I crossed to somebody's lawn, he'd let me have it. That's not your lawn. He taught me respect for other people's property. Amen. And I'm saying to you that you're in the Lord's army. You, you're going to have to fight for right. Every once in a while, you're going to have to say, sorry. I, I, got, I got a new barber and sat down, and he started cussing. I got up, and I said, look, I, I, want, you, I want you to have my business. I really do. But I am not going to come in here, and one day my grandkids come in here, and you use that kind of language. I'm not, I can't do it. I can't do it. So you, you tell me right now, are you going to continue this? I'll leave. Guy looked at me and he said, Reverend, slow down. I said, no, I ain't slowing down. I'm not going to put up with it. Foul language like that, it just irks me. I don't, what's wrong with us? Get a dictionary. Read it. And then speak it. All right? So now we, we see the word departure. Uh, is mentioned in, in the Scripture. Now, let's, let's take a look at maybe another view of this thing. Uh, let's go to Philippians, if you will. Philippians chapter 1, verses 23 and 24. Philippians 1, 23 and 24. Now, in the book of Philippians, we see the word departure, depart, used again. And so we found in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, in Philippians 1, 23, and 24, we find the word departure. Again, two, it's used in two ways in Bible times. One, for being in the army and being sent home, served your time. The other is being a prisoner, served your time and sent home. Well, you're a prisoner of that body of yours. Uh, you, you, you may end up in a, in a wheelchair like my wife did. You, maybe your body, but I'm, whoever you are. You're, if you're in a body, you, you, you're going to be glad when you're sent home to heaven, I promise you. Amen. So we find that being used there. Now, let's go to Luke chapter 9. If I move too quickly, I apologize. 
but let's go to Luke chapter 9 and take a look at verses 30 and 31. Luke chapter 9, and verses 30 and 31. In Luke 9, verse 30, the Bible says, And behold, there walked, uh, talked with him two men with Moses. Now in verse 21, he said, Who appeared in glory and spake of his departure, departing. It's the same word. So you'll find this in Bible times used for an army and used for the, somebody who was in prisoner to their own flesh. Um, now, when we take a look at, uh, at the exit or exodus that's mentioned, uh, when we think of an exodus or exit, the Jews knew what that meant. You'll find it in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 15, the exodus, the exit, uh, if you please. Now, the word decease is a word that's defined as exodus. So when you find the word decease being used in the Bible, it's like exodus or exodus. Now, Jews knew what that meant. Egypt, trapped in Egypt, there's the promised land. So I now uh, decease, I've, I'm exit. I've left, I'm going now to the promised land. Uh, now, you and I are trapped in Egypt. We can't help it, we're here. You know, like, we're in Egypt. But let me give you a clue from the Bible. The children of Israel were lived in the land of Goshen. The land of Goshen, the, 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 the flies didn't come there. In the land of Goshen, the frogs never came there. Wait a minute now, they were in Egypt, but they were protected because they lived in the land of Goshen. You're in Egypt, but you're living in the land of Goshen, or should. This is not the time to not tithe. Come on, somebody say amen now. This is not the time to not go so winning. This is not the time to not come back to church tonight. You're in the land of Goshen. Now live there and thank God for it because that's where the protection is. You will be protected. Yes, we're in Egypt. Yes, we're <laughs> trapped here in Egypt and Bidenomics. Yeah, yeah, we are inflation up. Everything, interest rates 7% now. When I went to Texas in 1980, the interest rate was 20 and 21%. Jimmy Carter. Typical Democratic administration. No, no, listen, I'm just saying to you that the exodus, we are going to exit out of here. My wife exited out of here on, on December 29th at 630. She left. She went to heaven. She was out of Egypt. She's not in Egypt. And by the way, you, you and I are in Egypt. But let's live in the land of Goshen. Let's, let's do what's right. Let's come be faithful to church. Let's be faithful to live for God. Let's be faithful to win souls. Let's be faithful to carry tracts with us and hand them out to people as, as we, you're living in the land of Goshen. Now, one day, you're going you're gonna to be deceased. What's that? An exit. That's what that word means. An exodus. An exit. So we found out absent, present. Absent, present. Say that with me. Absent, present. Louder. Absent, present. That's what the Bible says. Absent from what? The body. Present with who? The Lord. So you've left the body behind. My wife did not take her body with her when she stepped into glory. And she has no more pain now. Amen. No pain. And that glorified body, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. No cataracts there. <laughs> no, no surgery there. Now, I'm just, I'm just saying to you, absent, present. Then the word departure. It's like a soldier serving his time, being sent home. It's like a prisoner paying his debt, being sent home. Then it's the word decease that's found in Luke 9, 20, and, uh, 30 and 31, and 2 Peter 1, 15. The word decease means exodus. So no longer here, we're exodus. Where are we going? Promised land, to heaven. All right? Now, let's get our Bibles and turn to, let's go to Matthew chapter 8, and verse 11, see what else we can learn about. The question is, what is death? And we're trying to answer that. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 11, please. We found out absent, present. We found out it's a departure. We found out that it's an exodus. Now, uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 8 and verse 11, the Bible says this, And I say unto you that, that, that I, can't, I can't read it for me. All right. 
shall come from the east or the west, you'll sit down with whom? Abraham. Who else? Isaac. Who else? Jacob. Where? Kingdom of heaven. Ah. Well, who are these people? Well, it's a grandfather, a son, and a grandson. So they're sitting down in heaven talking. And the Bible says that there are some people interested in what they got to say. So they travel you know, east, the west, all parts of heaven, and they sit there and listen to them talk. So now you have a reuniting. So what is death? Death is a, a uh, absent present. Death is a departure. Death is being deceased. Death is also found in the reuniting of families. And so what do they talk about? I don't know, but I wouldn't mind being there listening to them. <laughs> I would like to talk to Moses. I, I, would, I would like to talk to the Bible characters. Peter especially. I'd like to talk to Peter. He, he's got a good temper like I got. Uh, all right, I'll go to Matthew. Let's say, say book, but let's go to chapter 22 and verse 23. Chapter 22 and verse 23. Verse 20, uh, I'm sorry, verse 32. It says, I am the God of who? Abraham. And the God of Isaac. And the God of Jacob. So he makes it very clear, and he says this, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. The living. Now, they jumped all over Brother Hiles one time. They said he would mention how he would go visit uh, his mother's grave. And they said that Dr. Hiles was praying to the dead. Let me ask you a question. Was his mama dead? No. She was alive. So... <laughs> If he was talking to her, he was talking to the living. She's alive. I find myself, my wife, God bless her. I, I'm crazy anyway, you understand that. But I, I could almost hear saying to me, uh, shut the lights off. You think we're a bank? I hear saying, now, put that seatbelt on. What's the matter with you? You're trying to get yourself killed? Now, I don't, I don't, I don't pray to the dead. But I find myself talking to her. <laughs> okay, judge me. Just go ahead. But I'm just saying she, she's not dead. She's alive. That's my point. Amen. The Bible point is he's not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. Amen. So you have loved ones that are in heaven. They're just as alive there as they are here. And they don't have all of the, all of the problems that we've got here. They don't have, they don't have Democrats in heaven. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> now, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying to you, please understand, absent, present. That's what death is. Absent, present. My wife absent out of her body and was present with the Lord. Amen. Now, uh, so what else? Departure, like a soldier serving his time. Hey, you've, you've, 20 years is up, now go home. Or a prisoner, in, uh, 20 years in the calaboose. Calaboose, I, where did I get that word? Calaboose. All right, you served it. And the judge says, all right, 20 years. Now go home. So it's a departure. It is also like the word decease or exodus, exiting from here and entering there, absent, present. It's also reuniting. It's families getting back together again and sitting down. I can't, I'd, I'd love to sit down and talk to my grandpa Scott and grandma Scott. I'd love to. My grandpa Scott, we'd go to Arkansas. I was just a kid. We'd go take our vacation, go down there, and he had a he, he ran a cotton farm. And he told me one day, he said, I want, come here, son. You go, I fed you, now you're gonna work. My grandpa Scott. So I went out, so I picked cotton, picked a whole row of cotton. Come back with my bag, and my grandpa Scott said, Come here, son. He put me up on his shoulders and he said, Look down that row. He said, You see any white out there? And I said, Yes, yes, sir. He said, Well, you didn't do a very good job, did you? He said, now get that sack and get back out there. And boy, if you've ever picked cotton, it'll cut you, it'll cut you up and down. But I did it. I did it. I, I loved, I, I just, I loved him. He would give me orange slices and a dollar bill every time I came. <laughs> that dollar bill was like $1,000 to me as a kid. Now, I'm just saying to you, what is death? Absent, present. Say it with me. Absent, present. Louder, I can't hear you. Absent, present. That's what it is. So if, if, if you croak while we're preaching today and you fall out on this floor, we'll, we'll have to take you out. All right, thank you. We can't, we can't leave you here. 
And, uh, but you won't be in that body when they carry it out. Amen. <laughs> You'll be in glory. Amen. And guess what? Your family members that are saved are in glory. Oh, my goodness, you're going to have a time. You know, you ever, your kids, are you kids like my kids? You don't, you don't know all they did until after they're grown. Amen. <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? Yeah. I sit around with the kids, and they start telling me all the stuff, the junk, the junk they pull. Not, not wicked things, but just dumb things. And I say, you did what? And you did, and you, and you, and you, Scott, he was the baby. We had a clothes chute in our, from the upstairs downstairs, and the kids would put their dirty clothes in it, and the chute would go down. Well, about once a week, they'd put Scott in that chute, and he'd go, he'd go down. Daddy, daddy, they did it again. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I'm just saying to you, I'm trying to explain to you what the Bible says about death. Are you saved? Amen. That's so important. And that's why you ought to support the soul winning. Amen. You ought to get on a bus route. Go soul winning. Do something. Don't let your family go to hell. Amen. Don't let your neighbors go to hell. But heaven's a real place. It's the promised land. And you, one of these days, it is appointed unto man once to die. After that, the judgment. Now, if you're saved, you'll receive rewards. If you're lost, you'll, you'll receive a hotter spot in hell the more you know. You know better. If you're here this morning and unsaved, in this atmosphere, in this church, you know better. Trust Christ. Death's real. My wife, we'd, we'd turn her. She never slept on her, on her side, never. Her head had three surgeries through her neck, put bone in her. It was like this all the time. So the pillow was shaped like this. She was in severe pain when her neck was like, like this. Her legs were crooked because of all the bone surgery. She broke her le both legs at the same time, one time. And her left leg was turned like this, and her right leg was like this. And we had to put the pillows just right for her to get comfortable enough to, to sleep at night. After she died, for the first time I saw her head like this, and I saw her leg straight. Yeah, I miss her. She doesn't have the pain. Amen. Doesn't have the struggles. This thing is real. Amen. It's real. We've got to understand what the Bible has to say about death. And that way, let's get people saved. Oh, we, I don't want anybody to go to hell. I, I got enemies, buddy. I got, I got more enemies than Carter's got liver pills. You can't do what I've done in 52 years without making somebody mad. I'm just saying to you, it's worth it. We're in the army of the Lord, and it's worth it. Amen. Pastor, we want to stand and sing to Mexico. <laughs> uh.